Hello and welcome to my RimWorld Let's Play series, where in this series I'm going to be playing RimWorld. Now, as I normally do when I start a new Let's Play series on a game that I haven't played before, what is RimWorld? Basically, you are leading a bunch of people from actually one person to five people, depending on what scenario you pick, and there are three scenarios. Um, you are trying to help these people build a new colony on a planet they either crash landed on or they landed on. There are other colonies and factions on the planet with you that are that are either friendly or they can be hostile like pirates and bandits and they will potentially raid you depending on what storyteller you pick and the difficulty. And there are three different storytellers and all that will make sense in just a second. Also another thing I just very quickly want to um, to say is that I find RimWorld's graphics very cartoon-like, which is something that I really love. And you see the perspective from an RTS view, like where you see the people below you and you see it from like the sky, which is something that I really, really like. All right, again, everything will make sense once we actually start playing, so let's actually start playing. I will not be playing the tutorial, I will actually jump right into the game. I also, one thing, I find RimWorld one of the games that has a little bit of micromanagement in them. It's not just click here, click here, click here. It is actually a game that you have to think and plan ahead and take a look at many details before you actually make a decision of something. And that is also something that I really like about RimWorld. It's not too much and it's not too little so it becomes boring. Again, all that will make sense, so let's get right into a game right now. Okay, so before we can actually start playing, we need to select the people that we're going to have in our colony. We have to select the storyteller and also we have to generate the planet that we're going to play on and we also have to select the scenario that we're going to be playing with. So, let's select the scenario. Okay, so these are the three scenarios that I was talking about before. You can actually create your own custom-made scenario, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to be choosing the crash-landed scenario for this Let's Play. Um, it is a scenario where you start with three people chosen from eight, so you choose three people out of eight. The Lost Tribe, your tribe got destroyed and now you're trying to rebuild it. You, you start with five people chosen from eight. And the Rich Explorer, you start with one person chosen from eight. Um, let me just see... I think you... the story is that you land on this planet because you want to explore the stars. Um, now you're at the end of your long journey in crypto sleep, landing on an unknown rim world to see what it's like. So apparently you just land, you don't crash land or anything, you just land and trying to survive on the planet. The way I understand it anyway. Um, so here we're going to choose the crash landed. The three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Some time later, you land on this unknown rim world. Your faction will be a new arrivals, so that is our faction. I think we can rename it later. Um, we start with three people chosen from eight. We start with some resources here and the map is scattered with three ship chunks, steel, and package survival meat. All this is good and it will make sense once we actually get into the game. So let's now click next. Okay, so these are our storytellers. We have three different ones to choose from. The storyteller basically selects the events that will affect your colony. So stuff like pirate raids, um, animals that will suddenly attack you, and I do believe weather events and maybe other stuff as well, I'm not quite sure. But if we take a look at the first one, called Cassandra Classic, it says, Cassandra creates story events on a steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. So Cassandra starts small and the difficulty rises um, steadily. If we take a look at Phoebe Chillax, Phoebe gives a lot of time between disasters to relax and build your colony. But beware, at high difficulties she'll hit as hard as anyone. So this is the more if you are the builder type that wants to mainly build, but you want a bit of action in here and there, just don't take it at extreme, because as it says, she'll hit as hard as anyone. Yeek! Randy Random? 
Randy doesn't follow rules. He'll generate random events and he doesn't care if they make a story of triumph or utter hopelessness. It's all drama to him, so he just mixes everything around. Basically. It also says up here actually. The AI storyteller creates events like pirate raids, resource drops or animal attacks. Their choices will affect the story of your colony. You can change these settings at any time. I didn't actually know that one. Um, <laughs> This down here is our difficulty, and I'm going to select some challenge, as it says for players on their first game or casual players who still want a challenge. Now I have played this game before, but I'm not really that good at it, so I'm still learning stuff, so I think this is the right one for me, and I'm choosing Cassandra Classic because of that reason as well, as I like the sound of steadily increasing curve of challenge. I think that will suit me the best. Um, Permadeath mode. In permadeath mode, you get one save file and can only save when quitting the game. You cannot reload the game to fix mistakes, and when the colony dies, that's it. I'm definitely not gonna take that, as I am not that well experienced with the game as I just said, so let's click next. There we go. And this is basically now we create a, now we start creating our world. And this is the world seed. Um, I'm going to keep it at that actually, your lander. Um, so there. This globe coverage is basically how much of the planet is, ava is available to you. I'm going to say 100% as 100% generates an entire planet. And I think that that would really make this Let's Play series a little bit more interesting. So we, we when, once we get down to the planet, we get a little area that we can work in, but then we can actually create create caravans and move out of that area into other areas and I think by having the entire planet like this I think it will be really interesting and you'll see more in a second. Um, I'm going to just leave overall rainfall and temperature at normal and well I'm now generating the world. Alright so this is our planet. As you can see it is the entire planet and these small icons indicate other colonies or factions and the ones with um, skulls on them they are like pirate pirate camps and bandit camps. Um, the other ones are just colonies. And if we click down here at factions, we will see the um, the different factions or colonies, and we can see who they are enemy with and stuff like that. And they are hostile, for example. So actually, f not only are these ones with the skull hostile, but the green ones here, the white eel. Camisa is um, is hostile as well, while the other ones are a little bit more friendly. We can also see who they are enemy with. Um, if we go to advanced, this is our this is the working area I was talking about, and I'm going to select this as I don't want it to be too large, so we start losing track of what we are doing and what is happening. So I think the 300 by 300 um, map is good enough. Now this isn't. The only place we can be, we can make caravans and move out of this um, designated area here. The starting season, I'll leave it auto, and you'll see really what I'm talking about once we get into um, the actual game. So let's just close that. Um, we can then select a random site. Since we are crash landing with escape parts, I think the random site is the right thing to choose. So also. One thing I did not explain is the different colors on the planet actually determines the um, the biome in that area. So if we click on here, for example, tropical rainforest, if we click over here instead, arid shrubland, and over here, desert, over here, extreme desert, and over here, for example, temperate forest and ocean, obviously. <laughs> um, and there you can you can actually see the planet name here by clicking on planet, the seed and the coverage. Then you can see the terrain, like average temperature, the terrain, the elevation, the growth period year-round, which is actually really, really good, so we can grow crops the entire year. Um, the rainfall, enemy, uh, not enemies, animals, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to select random site and hope for the best. So let's click on it. Obviously, there are stuff like if you land in a desert, there is going to be less trees than if you're in, for example, the tropical rainforest. And also these um, black areas here and then the lighter dots or whatever you want to call them, um, they basically represent mountains. So if we, c I think maybe we can see it in the terrains. So here, out here it says flat, 
then we click on this one it says small hills large hills mountainous mountainous and then impassable so the longer the more you go into these the um the more mountains and stuff there will be but let us now select a random site here we go and we actually landed in temperate forest so if we take a look at the terrain um the terrain is flat current movement time i actually don't know what these are the stone types that we have available is limestone and slate the elevation is 1040 meters average temperature is 23.4 celsius winter temperature summer temperature hmm, not too bad and growth period or growing period year round which is perfect i really wanted that animals can graze now they can graze on the um on the ground and average disease frequency 1.3 per year okay and time zone plus three i actually don't know what that is but now we have this area selected let's um let's do it i actually don't know what these lines represent i think they represent roads or something like that but um we're not too close to it so this is our area and we're going to say, uh, say next and this is the place where you could really if you have the patience <laughs> You can really spend many hours in customizing your people. This is the screen where we select the people that we want in our group to crash land. So these up here are the selected ones and these are the left behind ones. We can see the, um, the names up here. Every character has a backstory. They are sometimes also incapable of something and they also do have traits. They can have relations to other people and they can have injuries from their past and this is their skills which is really the important part i think so we have lyra who she is beginner when it comes to shooting but she's an expert when it comes to melee attack and the flames out here represent um passion how much they really like it so she has a really high passion for when it comes for melee and then a little a bit lower passion when it comes to construction so now we can go through our people here um she narda is the age of 31 she got pretty much every skill except for construction she can do it but she isn't really good at it if she totally could not do it then there would be a, um, a minus sign there we also have takio or marshall he's not really good at anything he can do it but not really good for example he cannot do any artistic or he's not um, investigating evidence making connections calculating and using logic he's not intellectual but he can and has a high passion for crafting um, we also have the left behind people which we actually can take just by holding left mouse button down and then dragging them up and um, then we can replace them with people up here but i think what i'm going to do also, one last thing, you can randomize one, so if we don't care about this person, for example, we can um, we can hit the randomize button, which will then create a new character. So I think I'm going to set up these um, our people here. Ooh, VR designer. Virtual reality designer. We need this guy. <laughs> okay, um, I'll cut out and be right back once, um, once I have the people I think I want. So stay tuned, I'll be right back. Okay, I think I made up my mind for what um, people we are going to have in our um, group here. <laughs> um, I actually got rid of the VR designer, story parts. But we have Crafter, we have Kisaki, and we have uh, Huerta. Sorry if I'm saying any of these names wrong. I will make sure that I'm saying them right in the next episode. But with so many names and you jump through them, randomizes them, then it's a lot of names so his health he has a bite scar in the left ear kisaki has a staff scar in her torso and bite scar in the neck i did not go for the perfect people i tried to get them so everything would match up but also so that we had some stuff that we had to be um concerned about for example um gerald is an optimist which is good but she's a slowpoke. It's always falling behind the group whenever he goes anywhere. So, yeah. And Bloodlust gets a rush from hurting people and never minds the sight of blood or death. He's twice as likely to start a social fight. 
I guess both good and bad, which means he will um, he will not mind the see seeing blood, and also I guess he will be good in battle. Also, his shooting isn't that bad. So I think all of these guys are um, and Gale are um, the people I want. Yeah, I think I made up my mind. Down here we can see our team skills, shooting, melee, medicine, cooking, construction, growing, medicine, and intellectual. Um, melee isn't that good, but I think we'll do fine. Um, so let's press start and crash land in this unknown rim world. Alright, the three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Some time later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Okay, so here is where we are landing. This is our crew. And this is the pet that we have, which is a female cat. Not bad, at the age of three. So here you can see this is our working area. This is the boundaries, but we can actually go outside them, like make a caravan and go to another place. Um, which we most likely will do in the future. But this is basically the map. You can see we have some um, we have some hills here. We have some compact machinery. We have steel resources to be gathered. We also have a lot of wood, which is exactly why I wanted to be in a forest. So I'm glad it chose that. We also have some like ruins and stuff, so we have like sandstone wall, human made. We also have some um, a building over here that we can actually use to our advantage. We also have enclosed areas like this very, very big one. And there might be nasty things inside, so we have to explore those and, well, be careful when we, when we do that. <laughs> um, so, uh, but other than that, this area looks really, really nice. So, one thing I want to say, I'm not going to go over everything in the menu. We will cover things as we go. So, the first the first thing, or also, we actually have um, muffalos, which gives a lot of food, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, let's get started surviving. So, first off, we need to, um, we need to get our crew here to assemble the resources that fell from our spaceship, I guess, um, into a stockpile. And we can do that in a very simple way. I'm just thinking of where to do it. So if we go to architect and then go to zone slash area, we click on the stockpile zone and then we need to select an area where we want the stockpile zone to be created. Um, Ideally, we should get all the items and materials under a roof, but since we are not that far into the game yet, I'm not going to do that just yet. Um, how about behind here? I'm going to make, just hold down left click and then drag and select an area. I'm going to select this area here. And then we can go to storage and then we can edit the settings for what goes in and what is prohibited, prohibited to get in there. So, for example, food needs to be um, raw food like fruits and meat and stuff like that needs to be in a refrigerator or a cooled area so we would need to set up a separate room for that and so so all the food goes into there but we don't really want metal and stuff in there so then we would only allow food but um, disable everything else basically and yes I have the game pause you can pause and unpause with the spacebar and in fact let's unpause um, so they need beds, hundred legs range of weapon, yes. Um, if you double click it will select the materials in an area. So let's just unforbid it so they can pick it up. If it's forbidden they cannot pick it up. So let's unforbid everything actually. They have a bunch of food here, some silver. We can actually trade with other spaceships that is that are in the area. Ooh, wood, we definitely need that, so let's unforbid that. Unforbid. And that's what I see right here. So I actually need to find, if we click here, or we can click on them either in the world or up here. We can, I don't know what this combat window does, but I'm thinking that it might show their strategy once um, if they get into a fight. We can see their social, we can see their gear, what they have on, 
and equipped. We can see the character, which is the skills, and then we can see their needs, and uh, we can see their mood, their food, the rest, their joy, beauty, comfort, and space. And we can see that uh, Crafter is in a little pain and also a little bit sick. But um, I'm out here with no little, uh, with little to no shelter. I better steal myself to survive. And we, another one just popped up. Ugly environment. Yes, we th they want their place and stuff clean. So a lot of stuff to take care of there. We also have their health, so we can see if they are, um, they are, um, if they have been shot, for example, or stabbed. We can see it here, and we can see what needs to be healed and what is healed. So I need to go to character and then see um, who's the best shot. Okay, so crafter, since you are the best one at shooting, equip that. So I just select the crafter. Right click on the um, rifle and then order him to equip it. Um, you, I want you to equip the revolver and Kisikai, will you please go and equip the knife? There we go. And you can see up here the stuff that we are currently having in our um, stockpile. And we have our cat here, which we can set to get the best quality medical care. Absolutely. I really hate if this thing, if this cat thing, no, that, that's horrible, um, if she died. So let's, um, so in here, basically, architecture and then orders. You can see a bunch of stuff here, like hunt, slaughter, chop wood, harvest, cut plants, all things, etc. What I want to do is basically to cut all the trees that are in the um, stockpile area. So basically what I do is select an area by start up here. I hold down left mouse button and then drag it down here. So there it just selected the stuff that could be cut. We can also say cut plant if the um, plant isn't grown enough to become a, to be a tree yet. So there we go. And they will do that. And I think we will get our people to sleep in here. So again we go into architect and you can see we have a bunch of stuff we can do here. So furniture and then we just we are just going to set sleeping spots for now. And we're going to set an animal sleeping spot down here as well, for now. I think we will be build our base around this pre-built area, actually. So I think that's what we're going to do. Um, oh, we have some wood here. We definitely want to unforbid that. Um, yeah, this looks nice so far. Down here in work, we have our prioritizations, which are priorities. So. For example, if firefight is at number one, crafter will prioritize firefighting if there's a fire somewhere other than, for example, um, I don't know, cook or hunt or stuff like that. So I just want to set that. There we go. And I'll edit in this as we go when I see what they do and choose to do and stuff like that. If I see that some things never get done. <laughs> um, what are you doing? Hauling steel to stockpile zone one. Hauling steel. Good. So, so far, so good. We, what on earth was that? Alpaca. Okay. Um, sure thing. Uh, also, our, um, our, our, co our colonists need their own rooms as they don't like to sleep with each other unless they have a special relationship. So we would need to take care of that as well. Um, I'm thinking, as I said, to use this pre-built over here as an advantage so we don't start from scratch but that is something that we will have to build and expand on in the future um, I think what I will do is to go to structure and then click here then we can select the um, the material we want to use so in this case wood so let's do that so now they will just build two doors there so this place is basically enclosed um, we also have all of this here, which is limestone chunks, which we can actually make another zone for. So if we go to zone area and we select um, expand allowed area, one second, dumping stop pile zone. So that will on its own set stuff like this to be moved over there. So where should we make this? I'm thinking over here actually. 
where it's out of the way. So let's do a seven by seven, eight by eight. So here, if we go to storage, we can see that everything other than anything that is run, allow organic things, which have started to rot, and weapons, uh, hold on, allow smeltable, I'll leave everything as is, but as you can see, chunks and stuff gets moved over here, and also corpses, except I don't want, um, I don't want animal corpses, because we need to get those in the kitchen, right, so... Okay, so he's still chopping that. And now they are building the roof, so we have a roofed, um, roofed area. So that is good. Nice work, Kisaki. So through the door. And so Crafter is carrying some of the boulders away. Growing zones, yes. We need to grow, grow our own food. food. What are these? Raspberry bush bush so we can get raspberries that's cool um no we have a little turtle or sorry tortoise is that how i say it totos man these is these names in this game it's good it's going to um it's gonna be a while before i get used to it <laughs> um i would like some light in here let's see if we go to power Production. I'm trying to find a campfire. Um, torch lamp. A wooden torch for lighting an area. Yes. Let us then. Let's put that right here. That is going to cost 20 wood. Okay, so Crafter is cleaning the area so they can sleep and be in an environment that is um, that is nice to be in. I want the torch to be crafted so we can have some light in here. And I think it will produce warmth, actually. I think. Okay, so Kisaki moves the wood over there and crafts it. There we go. Nice little light. Um, yes. Growing zones. Alerts. Uh, the alerts are the... Alerts at the right edge of the screen will tell you about issue... The alerts at the right edge of the screen tell you about issue that need your attention. What issue? Okay, I'll just mark that as learned. They will, they will come sometimes let us out here where there will be either good news or some bad news. Um, yeah. So right now we are... It's big... Uh, it is, the sun is going down. That's what I wanted to say. And... Crafter is a night owl, but I don't know if he will stay up at night. Um, I want these three to be hauled, so Crafter will go ahead and do that, and the same with Kisaki. And yeah, I think actually I will call it an episode here, even though we haven't played in the game much, then we definitely s we got ready to it, we got ready for it. Um, so in the next episode we will settle more, we will build each of our colonists a, um, a separate room, bedroom. We will most likely set up some grow zones, chop down more wood and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think this is a pretty good start. Also, if I didn't say this, you can actually um, increase how fast the time goes. So this one increases it a little bit, and this one increases it a lot. So I just wanted to say that. So now he's cleaning. Crafter is wandering. They also do stuff like wandering, meditating, watching the sunset, glazing at the stars and stuff like that. So, they don't only work. So, for example, both of these are wandering. So, and he's cleaning. No, he's harvesting. He's still harvesting. Hmm. Even though he's a slowpoke, he's hard working, I'd say. Where's he now going? Stargazing, as I just said. Cleaning dirt. Okay. Anyways. I think I'm going to call it an episode here with this nice music in the background. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope my explanations of the game and stuff like that was understandable. If you have any questions, feel free to um, to ask me and I'll see what I can do. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, remember to leave a like, comment and share it with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. And he's now resting. Same with the cat. We have to take good care of this cat. 
I'll be really sad if it dies in a fight or something. Yeah. Alright. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.